table. Uh, I've got some of uh, my nearest and dearest, the best minds in the comic book game with me today. Uh, if we could please introduce uh, each other to one another. Jessup. Hey, uh, I'm Jessup. I'm a half price crook. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, just happy to be here. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome, uh, welcome, Aaron. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, kid. First time I'm sitting on this panel. Feels great. Um, I'm about to start up a podcast with uh, Frank Gogol and Anthony Arroyo. Uh, it's going to be called The Food Chain. Come, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's pass it down to Phil. <laughs> oh, hey, it's Phil with Vintage Comics and Toys, uh, promoting Liquid Courage tequila shots. So okay. if, uh, you know, if you need some liquid bravery, just down one, you know, and listen to our spec and uh, listen to the alcohol, see see what happens. Outro? Ooh, this one? This one? Yeah, 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 it works. <laughs> Ultra Maximus here. Uh, hosted a Wednesday night presser. Uh, also uh, got my own little shindig going on on a little channel uh, that uh, could use your subscribe over there. Ultra Space Maximus, thanks. Uh, but here to just uh, drop some knowledge with the uh, with the boys, basically, and get to hang out on a Saturday night and having a good time. The guru of the FOC. No, no, no. Oh no, that's true. Brother <laughs> Steve. Absolutely. Ah, uh, Steve from My Bargain Comics, because you know. Some someone has to represent DC, and I, I'm not talking about Washington DC. I'm talking about DC Comics, AT and T Comics. <laughs> Shazam, Adam, Adam Comics. Yep, you're up, Carter. <laughs> hey, everybody! It's your main man, Mercenot. YouTube.com/slash Mercenot. You know me. Everybody Car watches me. Everybody Carter, me. if you're nasty. It's Carter, it's Carter Mercy Knight, if you are nasty. Rich, take it away. Hey, guys. Dollar Ben here. Uh, you guys know me from IG, dropping spec scoops. Um, I also have a um, FOC New Comic Book Day subreddit now. It's under uh, New Comic Book Day Spec. Yeah, original, right? All right. Sub me up. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like Wall Street Bets. Uh, very similar. Um, we will not encourage you to buy uh, GameStop, though. So there's that. But it'll still make you rich. Buy on the dip. Bing, bing, bing. All right, guys, let's get into it. Uh, pulled some interesting eBay stuff. Uh, first and foremost. Mm. What the heck's going on with the fourth world? See, Steve, someone else uh, cares. No new I, news. Yeah. I care. I care about this, believe it or not. Because it's Kirby. I mean, how how could you not love the the new gods? All right, first off, I don't. You, got, you don't love the new gods? Well, nah, yeah, no, it's, it's not my I know thing. Dark side is not as good as Thanos. We all know that, but Mister Miracle is kind of cool, if you ask me. Yeah. For a long time, we've been waiting on some um, morsel of information about the uh, alleged, purported uh, Tom King scribed film. Um, some uh, me. <coughs> have suggested that DC may be waiting to see how the Eternals does at the box office before it starts spending uh, big money on uh, casting or, or greenlighting uh, this film to go forward. Uh, again, that's pure conjecture on my part. Um, but, you know, it, these uh, are, I think, uh, by all accounts, soft prices. Um, is this something uh, you guys are interested in as buyers, or uh, are you like much of the rest of the market waiting to see? I would be a seller here in this market as these books start to get a little bit of shine because they they are on a lull, but they are waiting, like you said, to see how Marvel's going to do with uh, Eternals because New Gods is basically the DC version of Eternals that <clears throat> the same man who created the Eternals decided to write for DC. So it's it's a very interesting take because it, both properties translate very well, but they can be also very different in certain storytelling aspects, especially in different hands of different writers. And like you said, with Tom King having hands on the property, uh, I, I see it as 
desirable, but yeah, there's definitely uh, that cloud of unsureness with DC spec around DC movies. Yeah, I, I still don't believe the. But I say this every week. I, I, I don't believe we're going to see a Black Adam movie. I, I'll believe it when we see it. But we'll, we'll talk about Black Adam in a little bit. But just to give people a little taste, to stay tuned in. All right, AT and T. Was that rumor true about Black Adam's name changing? Is that a reliable source? It went through multiple reliable sources, but then I guess DC got wind of it and decided they, they saw the backlash from it and then said it was fake news. So, uh, it's well, I, I think it's what happened recalled. is is someone got a picture of someone <laughs> calling them calling them that, but it's kind of like a nickname, like uh, someone calling Batman the Dark Detective, right? They're they're not going to okay. go forward or calling them Shaz Adam, um, but you know maybe. In one panel, someone will call him that, but you know, I don't know. Maybe like a joke, like a little right. knock, like a what? Okay, well, right, just like call sure. Robin Baby Bird or something like that. Yeah. Sure. All right, let me ask Fair you enough. guys a serious question. Um, these are two live auction results. Uh, you can see the number of bids there. Uh, two interesting books. Um, if we could just kind of from. Um, Top to bottom, uh, if you guys would let me know which uh, of these two books you would prefer at as an investment buy at this dollar figure. If it were okay, if it were that Young Avengers sketch variant, then we'd be talking competition. But since it's not, there is no competition. We're going to go with Century. You, you. You, 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 and you, and you watching at home, you're going to go with Century Number 1 variant. Steve? I I am going to go with um, Young Avengers. Um, oh, you s- Because, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I see, you know, e- even when we go through the top 10, I always have in mind, you know, what's, what's going to pop for a week, what's going to pop for a month, what's going to pop for a year. But you know what's going to pop, or what, what's going to sustain um, and increase in value over five, ten, fifteen years? Um, you know, Young Avengers with the with the first appearances, um, regardless of the the team composition they have when they're introduced into the MCU, it may not be this exact um, you know uh, group grouping, um, but um, you know. You, you know, I I rather bet on a bunch of characters than a single character. Um, that there's my take. Ultra. Sorry, Carter. Even though we're dealing with a one in fifty here, we you, haven't. Oh, you we guys haven't, are full of shit. You're always just like <laughs> you're you're listen. People. No, hear, you hear me be out. Blessed. No. Hear me out, man. I got I got very logical logical reasons for 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 taking this route. So we we've got. We've got a book again. You're, you're talking about centuries of one in fifty, and then you have an A cover of a a book that has multiple introductions, and that speculation wise could have somebody appearing as soon as three to four weeks from now. So think about that for a minute versus thinking about how the century is a a good character. But he's a long term play, man. He's way more long term. And for the for the growth potential that A cover has traveled to catch up to a book such as a century one and fifty, I would go with the A cover all day. That really is a century that that, that really is a one in fifty. It is a one in fifty. And that's the wow. reason why that, that, that young Avengers is punching very, very heavily above its weight class at the moment. All right, so hold Personal. on. Ultra, you. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. You pick Century, not no, no, no. I pick I pick Young Avengers you over still the Century. Pick Young book. Avengers. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, we're gonna keep moving. Uh, Jessup. All right. Generally, I listen to Carter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've been listening to Carter for four or five years now. Um, <laughs> I, I sold my Young Avengers number one. Uh, I, I I have no no dog in the race because I don't have the Century. 
uh, one, one and 50, but I'll, I'll be on the lookout for it. And I, I put my faith in Carter. Fair See, enough. You will be blessed. Brother Phil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, Carter, but I'm going to have to go with Young Avengers one. Wow. Um, <laughs> Sentry's he's dead. Donnie Cates killed him, right? He got ripped in half. It's Marley. He'll be back. Dead. <laughs> he'll be, he'll be okay. back. Valkyrie showed him like getting getting loved on by some Valkyrie in the afterlife or something. I don't know. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, well, for right now, okay. So, I mean, Young Avengers one, Hawkeye, the casting for Kate Bishop. I mean, it's just, it's just <laughs> such a home run. It's, um, I really like this play. Uh, Young Avengers are the next generation of the Avengers. It just makes sense. Um, I think a lot of collectors and a lot of uh, flippers have stayed away from this book. So um, there's probably going to be some FOMO, I think, coming coming around. So, yeah, YA number one. Well, look at it. Look at this. You got. You hold, got on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just, I just want to get from the top to the bottom. Pick everybody. We'll, we'll get to you. And you'll be uh, at, next. I promise. Aaron Yi. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to agree with the majority so far and go with Young Avengers with wow. so many first appearances. Like, you know, we could definitely see this book grow even more. Like, and then also, what are you gonna more likely run into? Like a Young Avengers number one or Century One and Fifty? Like when you're hunting for books. Can I tell us? Uh, hold on, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. I, I didn't follow that last part. What does the commonality of Young Avengers number one make you choose Young Avengers number one at this price point for? Well, I mean, like, especially since, like, a lot of the Avengers are already, like, changing cast members and stuff like that. Like, I could see potentially see a new team forming for the Avengers. Okay. Uh, all right. Keep going, Rich. Here we go, buddy. It's your it's your chance. Which book do you like? We can't hear you, buddy. Microphone's out. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, can we got okay. you. So we got remember, you. I'm invested heavily into Century One, uh, but San Diego Comic Con. But uh, long story short, Young Avengers won all day, and I'll t and I'll tell you why. It's it's the wow. character it's the character driven of it, okay. The scarcity is there. You got that. The one in fifty based on the order. Number, I I totally get that. But as of one division yesterday, this book just literally was ignited with rocket fuel because of of Tommy and Billy absolutely confirmed. You have. I uh what's his name? Uh Eichel is that or I'm um, not Eichel, I'm sorry. Kid Loki. He's he's coming. And then you have um you have Kate Bishop, she's coming. And then you have Multiverse of Madness, which is going to have America Chavez. So my point is is that the Young Avengers are are obviously without officially saying it, they are forming. It's going to happen. Okay? Century, we're talking 5, 10 years. When does Marvel want a Superman? That's when Century's going to be coming around. Okay. Um, I am fucking speechless. This is why I don't... Uh, this is why I haven't been voting in the, uh, the Spec 10 so as not to unduly influence uh, people. I don't know if Carter and I are absolutely fucking nuts. No, the 150 yeah, is a better I, 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 book. I, 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 Oh, it's a better book. That's, that's not, give that's you not that. what you said. That's not what you no, said. No, no, no. I'm saying it's a better book. You're it's walking scary. it back. No, I'm not. I'm saying You're it's scary. I just said, did I not say it was scarce? <laughs> I just said that. It's a better book. But right now, if we're talking if we're talking upside and where we're going right now, character driven, young Avengers one look like it's gonna happen as of yesterday or Friday or whatever. That book I've, is this is gonna be a thousand dollar book soon. Eight, I, have nine, a, I have a judge that does this to me too. He'll be like, "You won, but you <laughs> lost." <laughs> <laughs> you presented everything like, perfectly, but you didn't present it perfectly. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm gonna rule in your favor, but I'm gonna rule against you. And I'm like, what? But anyway, uh, you know, I, look, I, I don't know. I uh, my point was kind of this. I don't know if uh, Carter, if you and I are crazy, uh -huh. or if. Um, this is a product of 
you know, how many Young Avengers number ones have you and I seen in the wild and pulled out of boxes? Exactly. I'm like, I, okay, I've seen, okay, I've found one of those century books. <laughs> okay. okay. And I've, and I've seen like, and I've come across 20, like, like handfuls. Yeah. Of Young Avengers number one. Right. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I don't know what that's. I don't know what that's the the product I've, of. I offer the caveat. Okay. The Young Avengers is a very tough nine point eight. Extremely, Absolutely. extremely tough Ooh. nine point eight, and I'm it, two for well, two. You, you know, you can you can get your hand you can that. get your hands on a stack of Young Avengers, but. Uh, and out of that stack, there's not going to be very many of them that are going to be worthy enough to get that 9.8 certification. Yeah, there's only so, 1,173 9.8. Only, and and, and I know that number's grown exponentially. But yeah. what's the total? What's the total sales figures on this book? I don't even know what's happening right now. The, <laughs> it's not a fucking tough 9.8. Uh, the census is fucking huge. Uh, you guys may still be right. Um, I'm fascinated by all of this. We're going to keep playing the game. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. On to the next one. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so All right. So here, here we go again. It's at the price point <laughs> on the picture. So so all right, so we've got we've got Darth Vader number three, CGC nine point eight, first appearance of Dr. Afra. Maybe TV show in the listing. So that's that's very good advertising on their part. Uh, versus Invincible Iron Man nine, CGC nine point eight, second print. So this is this is a byproduct uh, of the uh, second print is more rare scenario, but uh, I'm not buying it because of the first print of Darth Vader number three, the first Doctor Afra uh, over the second print first appearance, arguably of Riri Williams. Should I put the Darth? Uh, Vader three fourth print up here for you guys. <laughs> that made it more interesting. No, you uh. shouldn't. But here's the thing: uh, with with the whole re re appearances over two argued books, it's harder for you to lock down which one actually is her first appearance to to warrant the value. With Doctor Afra, there is no arguing the A cover. As well as the one in twenty five incentive, both have her clear as day on it, as well as her presence inside of the story. Uh, but let, uh, here's going to be the big argument: Is Star Wars going to be bigger than the Marvel character wise? So, I, in this one, I'm going with Darth Vader three. All right, now uh, again, just for uh, the sake of the d debate. Let's think about this. Uh, remember, Century, zero uh, news about some sort of forthcoming live action. Uh, lots of speculation, lots of rumors. Uh, <clears throat> Kate Bishop already got her own television series. By contrast, Riri Williams already got her own television series. Plus one. Should be an Armory Wars also, right? Mm -hmm. Dr. Afra, lots of speculation, um, but not any confirmed live action. Nevertheless, Ultra chooses Afra. Carter, talk to us. Uh, I, I'm going with, okay, if you're comparing prices, I would definitely go with Afra at that 396. I'm cheap. But I think long term, it could because Star Wars is it's like its own kind of like living, breathing thing. You know what I mean? And so um, it, 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 in long term, I, I, I really dig. I like the Dr. Afra. All right, Steve, are you going to break with the crowd or no? Well, I mean, I, I usually like the, the sure thing, um, but in this case, um, oh boy. I will echo what, what Ultra said. Wow. Um, you know, you not only have Invincible Iron Man 7 versus 9, you also have the first print versus the second print uh, versus the third print. You pl and you, you throw in Ironheart 1 to the mix. Um, the Apocalypse you know, variant. Ironheart yeah. 3. Right, yeah, there's just too much. I, Women I, of power. Yeah, I mean, Afra, you have her smack on the cover. You have one 
Um, you have one variant. Um, you do have the second, third, fourth um, prints. Um, but I, I tell you, I think I just sold my last slab of uh, Iron Man 9. I think I have some sevens left in, in the, um, I think it's third print. Um, so, I mean, I was willing uh, to let them go, whereas usually I, I hold on to evergreen, you know, what I feel are sort of evergreen growers, you know, like I'm holding on to my Vengeance uh, 1 variants and Ultimate Fallout 4 variants. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 like, I like the limited amount of choices for Afra. Um, and... Uh, I, I think people are always going to be waiting for her an announcement about her on TV and movies um, until she actually does appear. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm I usually go with the sure thing, but the sure thing is kind of muddied here. So I'm going to go with uh, Vader three. Yes, up. Yes, up. Yeah, come on, buddy. What do you think, Jessup? Jessup, You're muted. can't hear you, buddy. My bad. There, there we go. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. All right, it's it's almost a dead heat tie, in my opinion. Here, you've got multiple printings on the Afra, which I love. Obviously, no. No announcements or whatever, but everybody knows is she's coming, or, or the or the droids are coming. Something's coming. I guess the droids aren't coming without her. However, uh, you also have all the muddiness with the second, third prints, the woman of power variant, the ap apocalypse variants. I mean, I, I think they're. I, I think we're all in agreement of like you just buy them all, like if you can find them. Uh, but at these prices, I, I'm not buying any of them. Um, at all, like uh, you, you, you got in too late at this point, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> it's a good point. If, if you're buying, you know, nine eights at four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars of these, that, that no, look for raw copies. Find the, find the raw copies. Um, but if I had to pick one, if you had a gun to my head, I I, I take the Afra over the uh the second print of, of Iron Man's Iron Man nine, my bad. Uh, there's just too many books. There's too many books for both, to be honest. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't chase a third and fourth print of the Afra. Um, there's not many out there. I sold those way too, way too low. I had so many of them um, that I was like, all right. And nothing was happening. This was about a year ago. And 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 doled them out. But none of them were near. No, none of them were nine eights. But, uh, in my opinion, I think I think uh, you you got three first appearances in the Afro book. You got one first appearance in the uh, Invincible Iron Man nine. Maybe it's debatable. Um, so. If I if he had a gun to my head, I'd I'd go with a uh, Vader three. Good deal. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Darth Vader three, the CGC nine point eight first printing. Shocker. Uh, I mean, some of you have known that I've I was the one that uh, broke the theory that on CBSI that uh. Katie O'Brien, the uh, unidentified Imperial officer on the Mandalorian, could possibly be her. Um, in that final episode, she disappears from the bridge when they shoot everyone out and everyone's dead. So that actress has not said anything. She's been super quiet. She was last on Magnum PI um, on an episode a couple weeks ago. We don't know if it is her. Um, now looking at everything since I wrote that article, we've had this huge uh, Disney investor meeting where uh, they announced like what, like 10 Star Wars projects. So looking at that in microcosm, I would say that um, Afro 
very well possibly could be having her own series. I myself, if I was a Disney executive, I would cast the character really young, um, probably in their in their late teens, maybe. Um, this is a huge character. Um, I was talking to a uh, a big time customer of mine, and we think that like Disney could have uh, its own very own uh, Doctor Aphra theme park. This is how big this character can be, and with no uh, legitimate uh, concrete spec, this book is just defying all odds. I expect the book to at some point hit a thousand dollars in first print. I also do like the Iron Man nine second print. It's pretty cool. Um, some investors are catching on that the actress is actually a 22, 23 year old gifted actress and not some child star. Um, there's a lot, a lot of potential here with Riri Williams. I do like that book. It is um, on the upswing, but not as hard as the Darth Vader 3 first print. Aaron. Um, Aaron, if you want to go. Yep. So I have to agree with everyone else. Um, uh, I vote for Darth Vader 3 if I'm choosing a book between the two at, at the prices. Uh, I mean, like, I, you know, in my personal collection, I have both. Uh, but, like, I'm still holding uh, Darth Vader 3 to see where it goes. Do like, you have until... a 9-8 of the Invincible Iron Man 9 second print? I do not. What's uh, your copy look like? Um, so, I would say my my second print copy is probably somewhere between a 9, 9-2. Like, when I bought the copy, like, I didn't realize that it had like this little uh i guess bins on the corner and stuff like that and it definitely color breaks so this is like kind of like uh but i mean for the price i was like okay um but I, I did have the the apocalypse variant and i sold that way too early so uh but it definitely would not hit a 98. rich well, <laughs> I hate it's to go tough. against the grain here. Do it. Fucking do it. But, I mean, you know, let's go back to um, to the last book, The Century and the Young Avengers logic that Carter and Nico uh, shared, um, you know, Second, you know, uh, personally, I don't think late printings are for me, but they're here, and there looks like as of right now, they're here to stay. You have her full appearance, and she's on the cover, which helps. Not her first cover, but she's on the cover, which really helps. Um, the Afra, you have what S almost 2,098 copies on the census, and then, um you know how many of the of the Invincible Iron Man second print uh, with the with a full appearance with her on the cover, not a, a fraction of that. So you know, and at the price point um, for a hundred dollars less, with the way the market is going with late printings, I go with Invincible Iron Man nine. Now, to add to that, Ironheart is a lot further down the line than afra now phil's right there's a lot of potential with afra but we just had the investor meeting basically announced how many shows phil 20 and they didn't say anything about afra which was shocking to a lot of people um you know nothing's confirmed with riri and ironheart but it just seems like right now she is a lot closer and more than likely, she's probably going to be taking the mantle of the Iron Man. And, you know, I don't think Don Shadle's War Machine will be. And, and, and that's huge. And she could be a leading character going forward. I'll take the second print for $304. All right, guys. So um, let me give you the, the census info. Uh, it's close. 
Sixteen hundred nine eighths for Darth Vader number three. Sixteen seventy two. So seventeen hundred. Twenty five hundred total copies. Twenty five fifty three to be precise, right? Mm -hmm. um, how many copies of the uh, second print uh, nine eight do you think there are on the census? Anybody want to guess? I'd say about 200. 500, 500. You 30. say 500. Who's my man that said 30? Yeah, you're a lot fucking closer. Uh, really? 70. 100. 70. There's 70 okay. nine eights. 149 total copies, three nine o's, an eight o, a seven five, 10 nine twos, 22 nine fours. Uh, it's a tough, tough, tough uh, nine eight uh, for a modern book. How many graded? Um, a mere 149 copies. A expect so, expect yeah. that number to go up, which you would expect as more get graded, it would drive the price down though, right? I don't know. I mean, I, I Carter, how many copies of that second print have you pulled out of Ben's? Oh my God. Count, uh, honestly, <laughs> I want to say about like maybe five or six. Of the uh, second print, and how many copies? How many copies of the Afra? Oh my God! Um, uh, like two. Fascinating. Uh, so you know, uh, look for my money at three hundred bucks uh, compared to four hundred dollars for the Afra. <sighs> even with the small census, even with the re news, it's close. Um. Uh, I'm probably a buyer on Riri. Uh, what the hell? I, I've got three or four copies of uh, Darth Vader 3 at CGC right now, so what the hell? Uh, maybe I'm a little jaded. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, let's move along. Um, I, I wanted to give a, a quick interlude. We've been talking uh, about this thing, uh, which is... Are you kidding me? People are buying Marvel cards for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Series okay. three, though. It's not for series one. So series three, was not on the decline? I mean, series three, uh, $326. The Masterworks, 735 bucks. Uh, a ton of them at $800 last week. I think after we ran... Uh, the story on uh, flip side, everybody and their brother, including myself, went and got a box of these trading cards from uh, wherever the hell they could find them. I know I got one around here somewhere. I went and got tons of cards. So what you're I saying mean, is people smell you coming from a mile away now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, like I didn't even, dude, I, I, I didn't even know that this was a thing until I saw it. I was just like, what? I don't know where the box is, but the point is I went and got mine, um, you know, and then the funny part was I, I shared with you guys uh, before we started, um, I'm like, I'm not buying any of these stupid cards at all, I'm not doing it. I'm just selling these. I'm going to sell them for whatever I possibly can. I go to a store today and uh, what do I do? I'm buying Star Wars trading cards. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm as guilty of FOMO as anyone has ever been ever uh, at any point in time. I love hot shit. Uh, I love uh, having what everybody else thinks is cool. Um, guilty, guilty, guilty. Uh, is this a is this a, a trend that's here to stay? Um, I think I think it's a wave. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> What that sigh? <laughs> no, yes. someone screamed no in the background. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, this is this is nuts. And did he leave the price tag on it from what he paid for it? And does it say like thirteen dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. So I mean, look, we all. I remember. I remember being old enough to. Stalk the shops that had the Marvel cards when they first came out. And then remember that it was going to be the first four packs on top that had the limited edition ones. And just, just to be there when they open the box. That's all you got to do, man. Just And if the box is open, walk away. And ask them, are you guys opening a new box here today? 
And if you are, can I can I get the first four packs? And and, and th that's how you knew if you were dealing with somebody who knew what they were talking about and if they didn't. And uh, those people would always be like, nope, the first four packs are already sold, kid. Sorry. Damn. Well, it's because they knew the holograms were in there. <laughs> <laughs> so thoughts, anyone? I mean. I'm blown away. I, I, me too. It just leaves me speechless. And I. I mean, or is anybody else sitting on wax boxers or, I mean, do you all have uh, individual cards, chase cards, anybody else like go to the trouble of like finding them and digging them up? I mean, I found a, a, I found binders of the stuff. I'm like, oh, I got a binder. You guys are telling me like, take the cards out of the binders. I, the hell do I know? Well, when I was younger, I, I always remember that like card shows and comic shows were always one show together so you know and maybe it could start a trend again that we see more cards pop up in in conventions because i think someone mentioned earlier they they've seen card dealers at at different comic shows and stuff like that yeah i mean for me i used to collect this as a kid um from a historical perspective growing up in the 90s right I mean, we had a lot of, lot of shady, shady comic book shops and card shops that opened these and then resealed them, you know? So um, to get a crack at it again um, on a sealed box, you know, and open it with your kid or something, you know, or you're just collecting yourself. I mean, yeah, you know, it's another shot at it. I'm curious to see what the graded cards from these sets will resell for. It'll be interesting. Um, I know grading is extremely backed up at, um, I'm not sure at CGC if they're doing these cards yet, but- uh, Someone PSA told me the answer to that is no. Uh, and I was just shocked. Yeah, that's crazy. They, they should get some, some of this market share, but- uh, it, it could be a flash in the pan. It could be coming and going. I was asking in pre-show if, if actual sport car dealers are actually going into this market, right? Or is it comic people? That that remains to be seen for sure. I mean, we'll see you on the Instagram posts who's posting what and this and that, you know? So to be decided. Yeah, I, well, I looked up the, um, that, that, that um, X-Men Jim Lee like a sealed box of that from what 92 is going for like uh at least 500. look at this oh wow Got i right love freaking love those they had a great smell to them back in the day too hey, if, you know I, if i knew how to like make this work i'd try to blow you up ultra please forgive me for not doing that i don't know but well you'd have to stop sharing that screen and then allow me to share yeah it. you're i don't but it's fine. No. So <clears throat> the point is, uh, so a lot of us have them. I know Jessup before the show ran and grabbed some, right? Not necessarily Marvel cards, but you you were just went and grabbed cards, and you're like, you're like me, like, is this fucking worth something? Like, is that? Does anybody know? Uh, it's oh, fascinating, I, right? Because well, they don't want awesome. X Force trading cards by by Liefeld, you know. So I mean, I've got these. I've got the I've got the Jim Lee uh series or the X Men series ones, and then the Jim Lee X Men series two, which were fantastic. And not only did, was Carter right; these these have you know some of the best artwork that was ever turned into variant covers. And I actually did a spec matrix on the Jim Lee variant covers. That oh, yeah, uh, I remember that. Those and, good. And those those are some of the best artwork uh, variants that Jim Lee ever did, honestly. And uh, it, Marvel Marvel Masterworks also did a comic book where you could get some of those Fleers, yeah. you know, printed. So maybe that's maybe that's something we should be looking into Steve, next. I got DC cards for you, buddy. I got them right here too. I just I've just never been a a, a, a card guy. I just sort of. I tune out when people start talking about cards. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I hear you. It's like they're eight hundred dollars on the box. box. You know what I mean? I'm like, I mean, if I if I came across 
One, yeah, I'd probably you know flip you it. Wouldn't kick it out I'm of not going to go seek them out. You, you know? wouldn't kick it out of bed, is what you're trying to. Yeah, tell me. exactly. You, you wouldn't want to go after Crisis on Infinite Earths card with the Specter on it. I mean, is come it on, George man. Perez? Like, actually, it might very well be. A lot of these if cards. It's George are, Perez, like I, you know, I'd I'd actually keep it for the PC. And this is how it begins. And but. and honestly, <laughs> some you, you would be surprised at who who does the art on some of these, and a lot of them are actually fantastic artwork. That oh well, yeah, the, it probably Joe is Sterling. George. It probably is George Perez. Just, yeah. just so. all right. Let's get back to our bread and butter. I'm I'm gonna keep harassing you guys, um, because this is like the one that I. I uh, I, I really am, am just desperate to uh, hear what everybody's opinion is. Um, we've seen uh, books like ASM 300 triple in price, right? Um, over the course of a few years, uh, I mean, the escalation has been nothing short of astronomical. Uh, we've seen books like New Mutants 98 double in price, uh, in, in very, very, very short order. Um, am I wrong to believe that uh, Star Wars number one uh, may be the next book to see the same kind of um, just outrageous price escalation? Could There's uh, 10,000 slapped copies of this book remember there is a price variant um about fifteen thousand slab copies of hulk 181 the ten thousand uh figure is usually the approximate figure for the major slabbed books whether it's asm 300 or uncanny x-men 266 or star wars one um, you know, and I, and I think, uh, that for a long time, uh, licensed properties were always like second class citizens. And then that all kind of ended, um, here in, in the last five years, we've talked, uh, you know, about Power Rangers and GI Joe and Thundercats and all these, uh, you know, various licensed properties and, and, how much interest there is in them now. Uh, but Star Wars comics aren't a licensed property anymore. I mean, Star Wars comics are Marvel comics. Marvel comics are Disney. Star Wars is Disney. Uh, They're it's home. Kind of, it's kind of in that unique thing, right? Um, well, really, I, it's, 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 it's part of pop culture. I mean, it's, it's Americana... You know, I mean, this is what, you know, we export to the rest of the world. We export Batman and Spider-Man and Superman and, and, and Star Wars. So, um, you know, I mean, why not? I mean, I think this is yet another book where it's the sky's the limit. I, you know, I understand it was not valued very highly until recently, but... Um, you know, I, I think maybe we've what we've experienced is a permanent pivot point where, you know, th this book, you know, just will, uh, you know, obviously people love the Star Wars property, um, but the Star Wars comics, it, it, it took up until recently for for that love to come out, you know, for that whole you know, expanded universe beyond the, the silver screen um, or the streaming screen, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, th this this is, this is you know, part of our country, uh, you know, really, and, and part of, um, you know, it, it is uh, modern myth, uh, you know, just taking it outside of, uh, you know, a, a sort of, uh, you know, an Amer you know, American perspective, but, you know, these are the these are the modern myths, and this is uh, a comic that establishes the myth. My only wish is that the the cover art was was a little bit better. <laughs> you know, it only could have been like the movie poster, you know, or painted or something like that. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah, this book is. Um, 
I mean, I'll be bored and say this is like giant size X Men one in the becoming. Um, we did see a CGC, uh, I think it was like a three point sell for like one hundred sixty bucks last week on eBay or something. It's just kind of insane. Um, I'd buckle down, try to buy as many brawls as you can of this book. It's trailing Star Wars 42. Um, it's just a monster, and you have speculation still here. Uh, lately, Luke Skywalker, Skywalker coming back in The Mandalorian. Then you have the first appearance of Obi-Wan Kenobi, first appearance of Darth Vader. And they're going to come into play next year in that Kenobi series. I mean, this is just a monster of a book. Huge print run. He was saying that yeah, this is part of a Bracana, but there's also, I mean, I'd like to pay uh, some attention to some of the viewers over in um, England and the UK. They love Star Wars. Lots of Star Wars books there. And always. also uh, in New Zealand, Australia. Um, in Japan, I mean, this is an international pop culture uh, niche here, and people have been dying for years to have like a a Star Wars show that they can watch with their kids and relive memories of the, of this sci-fi movie trilogy. So, I think the ceiling is still super high on this book. I could it could. Well, Phil was lagging. I was trying to figure out just yeah. to what extent Phil was lagging. Um, Is that one of the other well, guys right now, I think. Hey, Phil. So, yep. Ah, he's back and he's not lagging, my man. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, you were lagging a little bit uh, for a second there. Um, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you if it, uh, while you were trying to finish your thought. I'm sorry. So, can I ask oh, okay. real quick? Uh, yep. Since you maybe go into the closet, is this box top from the original Marvel superheroes work thing? Thing, ah, dude. <laughs> <sighs> but my last guys. thought is uh, that ASM three hundred nine six is uh, uh, at suddenly at like fifteen or sixteen hundred right now, and the Star Wars one uh, nine six uh, I think it's sold for twelve hundred or thirteen hundred. So it's it's coming close even at nine six following the ASM 300. Um, it's a great book. Um, once you have, have real Star Wars collectors having FOMO about buying this book, I mean, simply said, I mean, everyone's going to be all in to try to get one as cheap as they can right now. So I strongly advise to get this book. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts, guys? I think, uh, I think the first Ben Kenobi was issue two. If I'm not mistaken, I think Han Solo is correct. Is it? I thought Han yeah. Solo yeah. was too. And he's Chewie. also in there too. Oh, I might be. Yeah, in there. Han Solo and Chewbacca and Kenobi, I think, are in are in too. If I, I could be wrong, but no, yeah, my apologies no, I if I have it mixed yeah. up. Okay, my apologies. The point is, it's Star Wars one. It's the big Star Wars book. Uh, I, I'm a, a buyer and. Um, I think I'm going to be a buyer on these books for a long, long, long time. Um, and I'll be real interested to see what the rest of the market does. Um, if people sort of uh, follow suit and, and start picking up these copies where they see them uh, and just sticking them away. All right. Um, I want to move along. Uh, I thought this was some fascinating news. Uh, guys, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here? Director change? Or yeah. director assignment, or I don't, I, yeah. one, of the, one of the two. Yeah, I don't know that that's uh, necessarily a well-sized uh, photo, so uh, forgive me for cutting you all off. But um, eh, We deserve it. Yeah, so uh, new director <laughs> for uh, the Blade film, right? And um, I, I guess my question is, um, you guys real excited about Blade? I'm really excited that there's a lack of blade variants in the market and that's probably going to be filled here soon while they build the hype for the movie. Like as we build the beat towards the movie, as Mel would say. I just want to know, is it going to be rated R? 
Yes. Oh God, you're the second person that's that said that to me today, and uh, <laughs> both times it paralyzes me. Oh, right? right. Because we've all heard Marvel uh, talk, you know, very explicitly, like, "Don't worry, you're going to get an R-rated Deadpool movie." Mm-hmm. Don't worry, we're going to do uh, adult content on Disney Plus, and uh, when people, because everybody, all the people that say that, and I know you fucking have heard the same shit, Aaron, but you still say that too. What you really mean is, are they going to half-ass it, or am I going to get vampire spray across the side of the room like I desperately <laughs> want, like we all deserve from our childhood, <laughs> right? Like, right. Yeah. Well, Wesley Snipes' blade is going to be very hard for them to follow up on. Let's just be honest. It's the truth. They need they need to have an R rated blade that is more badass than the one that Wesley Snipes put out in the nineties, and it's kind of like what what's another reboot where somebody stepped into the shoes of the of the main character and then like really did it justice? Because it's going to be like that. Well, everybody's looking up and thinking, awesome. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you it's know, a tough one. I know. It is a tough one. It's absolutely a tough one. Uh, uh, maybe uh, James uh, Bond. I think we talked know, like, about this in the, the Hangout this week. Uh, um, Don Cheadle, right? He stepped in that role. Well, uh, I mean, I know it's a supporting character, but... No, the other guy stepped out of it is really what happened. Well, but... yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but what about um, James Bond? That's a right. yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like... It can be done. This can be done. And uh, if anyone can do it, it's our man from the green room. Strong as they come. Uh, Strong as they come. He's legitimately um, maybe the greatest actor of a generation. And uh, comes out guns blazing with his Marvel blade hat. Fuck. I'm stoked. Um, The other one that I I really want to talk about, guys... Um, and I, I hope you'll, uh, son of a bitch, with the, the shitty uh, <laughs> sized photos, I apologize again, was no, uh, not... this big reveal. So uh, I assume this is going to drop on Thursday, and if you haven't seen WandaVision um, yet, uh, well, that's your own goddamn fault, and it's already been spoiled for you a thousand other places. They're waiting uh, on the next episode if this drops on Thursday. So yeah, be yeah, they'll be waiting up uh, late night with uh, the rest of us. What the heck did you guys think? I mean, did you enjoy this as much as um, I did? Or, or are you watching WandaVision? I enjoyed um, the episode more, more than uh, the, all the rest of them so far because this one definitely gave us deliverance. They gave they gave us del- they delivered. They, you know, we wanted to see, and they you know keep raising the bar. But we're not even was that the halfway point. Yeah, I think that was the halfway point because they said they, it's going to be ten. Yeah. So, so that was the halfway point. So we're halfway through a really long movie that we're all going to rewatch. So the next episode is going to come. You're going to go back and you're probably going to rewatch what the last three. Uh, that's probably what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do that again until the very end, until I can watch them all all the way through and be like, wow, that's like a, a, a you know. It's, it's, Six hour movie, right? Almost five hour movie ish. I, I rarely watch anything more than once, but I, I, I did I did feel the need to uh watch the last episode again. I haven't yet, but it's it's on my docket and yeah. I think there was a lot to unpack and it definitely this last episode. After after episode five, I found myself watching Age of Ultron. Mm. And yeah, then I idea. went, and then yeah. I went back and watched episode five again, and it just felt like it, it felt everything kind of tied together. They they plug Age of Ultron if you sit and watch the credits till the end, because mm-hmm. yeah. um, I'm I'm waiting to the end to see if there if there's like you know a little teaser or something. Uh, something after, and then we're the, the same next. viewer, Jesse. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Then they like you know like oh well perhaps you'd like this episode of Age of Ultron like, like oh yeah. Yep. yeah but I mean why why else would they put five minutes of credits you know 
you would think they were going to put something in there. The or, right. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way there's that many people. They're making people up. Phil, yeah. did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. It was quite, um, you know, it was kind of did. It was kind of funny. Like the reveal was like, it kind of was like a good hot second. Like, okay, is this Quicksilver? The back of this guy's head with white hair, or is it Magneto? You know, like that big drop was just like, okay, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, for spec wise, I've been monitoring the market, and I see X Men books just just random. Um, first appearance, modern age, just starting to slowly, you know, go up a little bit. So, um, you know, be on the lookout. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm going back to the show. Um, I'm pretty excited to see, um, what happens next. Um, I, I didn't see Mephisto. I don't know. Did you guys see him? I mean, there's an impression that there is someone else there in in Westview that is making everyone do whatever they're doing for their day to day routine, but mm. I, I didn't see him. I kind of caught so, a couple of things, so but I, right. I, I, I will say that I caught when Wanda walked right back through the hex, the red silhouette created in the the field was kind of wild looking, and I kind of thought maybe that might have been a sign of Mephisto. The commercial right after that that showed the red spill. Lagos. Uh, uh-huh. Lagos. Uh-huh. Oh, so But then the, it's been red throughout the show too. Yeah. And well, she then, is the Scarlet Witch, so yeah, that's true. you know, so there's there's <laughs> been there's been a couple of little bit of a uh, little bit of Easter eggs and stuff like that 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 I caught. Uh but yeah, I mean, we don't. bring the Red Skull back in too. No, nah, I don't know. It, 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 I I think it was leaning more towards Mephisto. But when the remember when the dude got freed and he's like, "She's in my head. She's in my head. I can't get her out of my head." Mm-hmm. I don't think it's I don't think it's Wanda. He's he's talking about. I think he's talking about Agnes, aka who I think is Agatha Harkness. And I think she's, again, Agatha Harkness is, or Agnes has been talking about her husband, Phil, right? We haven't seen Phil yet. I'm thinking Phil's Mephisto. And that Agatha is the one controlling the city, basically. I thought know, the husband's name was Hank. Or, yeah, whatever her husband's name is. We haven't seen her husband. That's That's all I know. We have not seen her husband yet, and I she think made, that he... Uh, she made some, like, questionable representation. I thought his name was Ralph in the show. Ralph, 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 thank you. Yeah, Ralph. It is, Ralph, it is Ralph, you, Ralph. Ralph, yeah. Yeah, sorry, thank you. Uh, but she made some questionable, rep- uh, questionable representations about the location of her home. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. Uh, she said it was one place, but then it was... And then she looked through her Ralph window. Ralph lived there, yeah. not... Or, I'm or sorry, the, Hank, the, other the guy. black guy, not Ralph, that yep. lived there. And uh, then she said it was on the other side, and they take you to the other side, but she doesn't fucking live there. Um, she's a bad reporter, not that anybody's necessarily a good reporter on the show. <laughs> uh, it's just interesting. I, I'm uh, I'm really, I guess, um, less concerned with the intricacies uh, or, or, like, trivialities of, of the show than I am uh, really about, like, how it's all going to wind up. Uh, it's been reported that... Um, they're going to have a big cameo. Uh, the quality of Mark Hamill at the end of the series. Um, that's been reported in a number of uh, mainstream news outlets. Um, the quote stems from an interview that was done that, again, um, you kind of can't trust the reporter um, only because they're sort of loosey goosey with their language. Uh, you know, so we're, People like me and and you guys really want to pen them down on that stuff. Um, they were Who's talking your about, source. <laughs> yeah, well, they were talking about like it. Uh, I can't can't believe people don't know about this casting already. And then they were talking about a major cameo of a a, a big character, and um, 
you know, it was just kind of like, well, is this an existing character? Is this a Fox character? Is this a new casting for a new character who's an existing Marvel character, obviously? And I, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts about that. I mean, did anyone see Quicksilver coming back? I didn't yes. see that. Yes. Yeah, that was yes. actually reported by uh, Daniel or PK months ago. Oh, um, no. even, that it was Evan, even that it was Evan Peters. Yeah. So that so was not okay. really a surprise, but... I'm I'm kind of um, curious about, um, you know, when someone mentioned um, Captain Marvel, Monica, you know, you know, not please. So, um, and we know she's going to appear in Captain Marvel too. Well, so, remember, she also talks about an astrophysicist, right? Who yeah. we presume is Reed, Reed Richards, Richards. Yep. Right. Um, that too. Yeah, I mean, are we just going to see uh, John Krasinski? Uh, pop in and be like, hello. <laughs> that would be awesome. The ultimate fan casting, right? Yeah, it'd be sweet. The, the, the internet has called for it, therefore John must oblige. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back.